I'm Louise Rowe, and I want to tell you that Bob Wills handpicked me to be a vocalist on his band, and now I'm 86 and three-fourths, and I'm still on the bandstand dancing with my bass fiddle with my band, the Texan Playboys. Well, this is Audie Grider, and I'm here with Louise Rowe, and we're going to talk a little bit today about her wonderful career and life that she has had in Western Swing music. And Louise, I guess we'll start off with talking about your time with legendary Bob Wills, the king of Western Swing. Uh, how did that come to be? How did you first end up as the Texas Playgirl, so to speak? In, in Dallas, there was a a battle of the bands with my brother's band who who was Al Dexter, the pistol back and mama man. Oh yes. Uh, they were his band and uh, Al Dexter booked Bob Wills and the Texas Playboys and my brothers, the Row Brothers, uh, with a battle of the bands and I came up to sing a song and while I was on the bandstand, Bob Wills hired me to go on a 18 day tour to start off with. Oh, wow. But it was just a tour to sing four or five songs a night because Ramona Reed had quit. Oh, okay. And got married. Okay. So he needed a girl singer. Right. And uh, anyway, so my brothers gave him the okay to take me. <laughs> <laughs> when Bob told me he was putting me on bass, I said, uh, Well, you know, I can't play very good. He said, You can't yodel. He said, So, he said, you playing the musical instruments and singing the backup harmonies, that makes up for it. <laughs> so, <laughs> that was okay, I guess. <laughs> Bob, Bob treated me like his daughter. Oh, wow. He was very protective of me. And he told me, uh, <laughs> I don't like to tell this because it sounds like that I'm, you know, kind of pushing myself. Oh, no. But uh, in order to, he, in order to tell the story, I have to say it. That's okay. Uh, there was a, a talent scout in Hollywood, and we were staying in Hollywood there. And this talent scout had I had met him before when I was out there with my brothers. He, uh, his proteges were. Yvonne De Carlo and Missy Gator were his biggest ones at the time. Oh. But he he started a long time before them. He was an old man. And I, so uh, my brothers took me down to sing a song on his TV show. And uh, I sang the song, and uh, he wasn't impressed with Western Swing, I don't guess, because he told his secretary to put me down as a model. And he wanted to give me a screen test, and and uh, he called Yvonne Di Carlo on the phone and told her that he found somebody that was going to be her understudy, and until he broke me up for myself. And anyway, I went. I I was so homesick I, that I told them my mother, my grandmother died. My grandmother died before I was ever born. But I told them that my grandmother died and I had to go home. So I called a bus and went home and, and I didn't get the screen test. So not long after that, I went to work with Bob Wills and we went right out there. And I, I thought, well, maybe I'll get my screen test now. So I called them up and uh, they took me to uh, Roma's Chinese Theater to sure. premiere. And he was going to set the screen test up, and I came home and I was so thrilled that I saw Jack Lloyd, the singer, and I said, Jack, I'm going to get a screen test. Well, he told Bob. The next day, I was sitting in a restaurant by myself, and I didn't know Bob was in there. He was with some man, and when he come, when they come to the front of the place and past where I was sitting, Bob looked at me and he said. Don't you even think about talking to any of these people 
in this place here. He said, I'll send you home to your brothers. He said, because this is no place for a girl like you. And I never, I never called him back. I never had anything else to do with it. But Bob was watching out for you. He was. <laughs> Other than Bob Wills, uh, you've you've played with all my who's who of well, of country musicians. I, I toured west with Bob. Mm -hmm. We toured all the western states. Come back to Dallas three times while I was with him. The year I was with him, and uh, then after that, uh, I toured on the road with the Grand Ole Opry shows. And with Minnie Pearl, I got to play behind her. Oh, and love Minnie Pearl. George Jones and I. Oh, when he had a little burr haircut and, burr, and way uh, back then. <laughs> yeah, and uh, oh, let me see, Marvin Rainwater. Love Marvin. Billy Walker, and I made three tours with Little Jimmy Dickens, and that was that was a deal. That tell us a little bit about. I, I'm a I'm a big Little Jimmy Dickens fan, which is a contradiction in itself. Well, <laughs> we were on we were traveling on Billy Gray's band bus, mm -hmm. and everybody there were eight of us. There were uh I mean there were nine of us. There were eight bunks. Uh -oh. So one person drove the bus. Oh. That was Leon Bollinger, the fiddle player, and uh, he drove the bus, and I had my Bunk and I was married to Tommy also at the time, and his bunk was just right across from mine. Well, little Jimmy Dickens, he parked his car every day, he got there to the first night of the tour, and then he got on the bus with us and did the rest of the tour with us on the bus. Well, so we were short one bunk, so you just had to sleep with a pillow in the little aisle, or you wherever you could find. So I told Tommy one night, I said, Tommy, I said, I'm going to run, take care of my base. I'm going to run to the uh, bus and I'm going to get in my bunk and, and go to sleep. So I get to sleep in my bunk sure. tonight. <laughs> and so he said, okay. So I went and the next, I, I went to sleep. And of course, I always sleep with my knees up to my chin. And so that left the bottom of my bunk was empty. Well, the next morning I woke up, little Jimmy Dickens was laying at the foot of my bed. He was sleeping at the foot of the bed, just like the song. At the, foot of my bed <laughs> the next morning. <laughs> That's about the best story I've got. <laughs> well, they say that country music is three chords and the truth, and so that song is the truth. He did sleep at the foot of the bed at least once. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. Oh, I've I've heard that that Jimmy was a uh, was a hoot and was just a really nice nice oh, man. He was precious. Yes, he was precious. Now I, I bet you've got some stories about Farron because I know that they're they're legendary. Far Farron was quite the character. Well, last <laughs> night, last night we did this one tour, and uh, Norma Jean was with us. She oh, sang sure. Her, and she was so pretty that everybody just, all the guys that we toured with, they, they just oohed and awed over all the time. Well, the last night we were having a party, a goodbye party, mm -hmm. and when I walked by Farron Young, he grabbed me and he said, this is the one I want, and he planted a kiss on me. He didn't. Believe. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> He grabbed me and he planted on me. Oh. Of course, Tommy was right there. Right there. Us, but he didn't care. <laughs> oh. So, anyway, that was funny. I'll be 87 in a couple of months. But you're still out playing. Yeah. How often do you get out and play? Is it a. a, a... As often as they'll let me. <laughs> But at least a couple times a month, you, or I once a month. I have these guys like Mark and Jim and Our good friend Stewart. Mark Minton. And, oh yeah. That made and this I, possible, by the way. This is Mark Minton, the best drummer in the world. He's in my <laughs> band, the Texan Playboys. And we've been together about five years. We've mm -hmm. been playing in that band. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, 
we don't fight very much. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I was at the right place at the right time. Sometimes that's all it, it takes. I know it. You know. I don't know it. And that's uh, you. You've you've toured and you you played music with a lot of people that are just legendary names. Um, and you've seen some odd stuff. Tell tell me about seeing Buddy Holly play the drums. Well, uh, uh, Tommy also, who I was married to all the time that he was with Buddy Holly, all the tours mm -hmm. that he made, we were married. Well, this time Buddy came over, we, uh, uh, Tommy took the Southern Airs band, his band, over to Odessa uh, to, to play until he came back off of that tour with Buddy Holly and, and uh, you know, Richie Valens and the Big Bopper. Well, uh, when he came over to make arrangements with Tommy, I was sitting there at the table with him and we sat there for a while because we got to be good friends uh, because uh, Tommy was with him. He toured about a year before that with Buddy. And so, and, he, and I was in the studio all the time that Tommy also did those recordings with Buddy. Mm -hmm. I was in the studio right there. Uh, with them. I didn't get to play because Joe B was playing bass and he was with the crickets. And so, <laughs> but you were there. That's, so, but that's I was so in there awesome. with them. I was in there with those recordings and that was a treat. And uh, anyway, so after Buddy and I visited a while, we went back off of our uh, intermission mm -hmm. and he got up with us, put dark glasses on and, and played the set on the drums. <laughs> And we lost him mm -hmm. three or four day, nights after that, oh. three or four days. Oh, no. Yeah. So, but that's such a wonderful memory. It, to it, have. I had a lot of memories because uh, one night I came in, I came in from church, and a friend of theirs who was a hypnotist, he had all the crickets were hopping around and jumping around like rabbits and stuff. And uh, when I walked through the door, they said, oh, here's somebody else that he can hypnotize. And you know, get her to do some silly stuff like all the crickets and Buddy and Tommy. They were all there doing that stuff uh -huh. in the back of the studio. And uh, he tried for 30 minutes. He never could realize me. <laughs> I was too hard headed. I guess. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, a lot of people talk rightly so about Tommy Duncan's vocals with the Texas Playboys and Jacks and 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 all of the great singers that Bob had throughout the years. But sometimes people even go to the to the length of, well, Bob couldn't sing. Yes, he could. Oh, yes, he could. Yes, he could. <laughs> and I think that's wonderful that you got to do that with him. Oh, yes. That's Bob just... sang a lot. And we sang a lot together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I've always been a big fan, not only of his movies, but of, of his music of Tex Ritter. It was, he was just a, just a nice guy. Yes, Tex oh. was a very, very nice guy. I bet you've got some Moon Mullican stories, or at least one. The guys, everywhere they went, they took me. I was okay. their sister. Okay. You know, I mean, the guys in the band, the Texas Playboys, they just took care of me. Well, they taught me how to play poker. Uh-oh. And I wasn't winning for some reason. <laughs> I remember I never had any money. And Bob asked me one day, he said, child, are you saving some money? And I said, no, sir. How much have you got? Well, I don't have any. And he says, I'm going to put you on a, what you call it, a... An allowance, a budget? Allowance. <laughs> I'm going to put you on an allowance. But I, he never knew that I played poker with the guys. <laughs> And they're taught, they're the ones that taught me how. Uh-oh. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so we get out in, in uh, Odessa, and Moon Mulligan was on the band. He was playing piano with us. And uh, so one night the guys all decided they was going to have a poker game. Well, I hadn't played it in a long time since I was the Bob's band. Anyway, so... I guess they called it beginner's luck, but I won everything that everybody had that night. Oh, all the money they had. <laughs> and Moon Mulligan, he said, 
It's like your old brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I want all of his money that he had in oh, that night. <laughs> From that era, there's how, how many of y'all are, are left? So it would be... Well, the ones that Bob handpicked, you know, that were his band before he started working with this that other house Re bands. Regional house bands yeah. and things like yeah. that. Uh, there, there's, I think, five, let me see, me. Casey Dickens, Leon Roush, Bobby Cofer. Herb's gone now. What did Bobby play? Bobby Cofer? Steel guitar. Steel guitar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I think that's all of us. And Ramona. Ramona. Is left of the singers. So what, what kind of, of vehicles in those days, like when you were with Bob, were y'all on a bus, or was it a couple of three cars, or how, how did that work? When I was with Bob, uh, we were traveling in cars. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> Bob had a Lincoln Zephyr. Mm -hmm. what? Oh, those were beautiful those. cars. And we had, I forget what the other one was, uh, but it was pulling an instrument trailer. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we were in there one day, something funny happened. We were traveling down Route 66, and, and uh, there were four of us working out the song Seven Lonely Days, four parts, harmony. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Eldon said, uh, Eldon and Keith and me and, and, and Billy Bowman, and I, I think one more, I think there's five of us that's in there. But anyway, the drummer, uh, Greenback. Anyway, uh, we were rehearsing, Eldon said, well, I wish we had a guitar up here uh, so we would be able to get a G chord so we'd know, you know, exactly where we are. And, of course, me, I was a teenager. I spoke up and I said, Eldon, I can sing a G for you. <laughs> and they had a... I mean, they had a ball over that. They laughed all the way to California or wherever it was going. And then when we got to the job, we got there early in the day, and uh, I walked in to the place to check the stage out, and Skeeter was in there tuning the piano. And when I walked in, Skeeter looked up and saw me, and he said, Louise, come here a minute. I said, okay, Skeeter. I walked over there and he said, would you hum me a G so I can get this pen in tune? <laughs> that night, Bob Wills, he called me up to sing my song. And he says, child, hum me a G so I can tune my fiddle. <laughs> this went on all the time. This was every day, stuff like this. But uh, I got it back on them. We stopped at one of those little uh, curio shops and one of those little things where they had hot gum. Mm -hmm. And well, I gave Skeeter some of that and, and he coughed for about 30 minutes. It was really bad stuff. <laughs> oh, bless and, his heart. And then that night, Bob, after Bob said that to me, I said, Bob, I got some grape flavored gum that's so good, you'll just love it. And I held up a piece to Bob and said, Don't you give me none of that hot gum. <laughs> Skeeter done told him about it. <laughs> this was all the time. Y'all had a lot of fun. It was wonderful. So it you, really was. Nothing bad, no just no bad stuff. Just little little just, jokes and poking stuff, at each other. You know? Yeah. Go looking back over your your life and music and your career. It seems like that overall you just had a great time. I did. I loved it. And I still love it. I still love the music.